Today we are going to talk about myocardial infarction also known as MI or in simple words heart attack. Now in our last lecture we discussed about the acute ischemic heart disease. Now if an acute event occurs in a blood vessel a blood vessel that is supplying blood to the heart muscles for example this is the right coronary artery it is supplying blood to the heart muscles and here it is the left coronary artery it is supplying blood to the uh, heart muscles again on the left side now if an acute event occur which we discussed in ischemic heart disease in in our last lecture ischemic heart disease is any uh, condition which decreases the blood flow to the heart and when it occurs suddenly acutely and there is a uh, the blood flow to the heart muscle stops then this condition is basically known as myocardial infarction if it leads to death of the heart cells if it leads to death of the heart cells now simple decrease in blood flow to the heart muscle will not cause myocardial infarction because infarction infarction means a death of death especially due to obstruction of the blood vessels due to which blood is not coming to the muscles now what happens in myocardial infarction the process of myocardial infarction is such that when there is formation of a thrombus in a coronary vessel for example here in the right coronary artery in the rca there is the formation of a thrombus due to blood clot and we discussed that the most common reason for acute event the most common cause for ischemic heart disease or the most common cause for chronic ischemic heart disease is atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis basically is the deposition of cholesterol in the blood vessels and when the atherosclerosis uh, process increases the it disrupts the endothelial surface and the the blood stop uh, the blood cells starts clotting there and a clot is formed which is known as thrombus and due to the formation of thrombus blood flow in this vessel is basically stopped now when the blood vessel uh, the blood flow to the uh, in this vessel has stopped what will happen that there will be no blood will be supplied to the muscle the part of the heart which is being supplied by this vessel for example if this portion is being supplied by this special coronary vessel now this area will not receive blood because the blood flow has been stopped due to sudden obstruction now what will happen is that we discussed that some some blood some blood may start coming through collateral vessels these these are other vessels now this blood vessel is open this is normal it may have some slight atherosclerosis but otherwise it is open and if there are some branches some small branches through which blood can come from this blood vessel through this air to this area which uh, to which the blood the main uh, vessel has been stopped now this is known as collateral circulation this is also something which we have discussed that collateral circulation is basically the communication between two different vessels and it helps it has life saving value because if this vessel has uh, been blocked now blood can come to this area and it may be able or it may be sufficient in some condition to keep this area alive now if this collateral circulation is not enough if it's not enough for example the the need of the heart muscles is 8 milliliter of blood per 100 gram of heart muscles 100 grams of heart muscle per minute this is the normal need of the heart muscles this much amount of blood is basically supplied normally 8 ml of blood per 100 gram of heart muscles per minute this is normally supplied to the heart muscles now if the blood flow through a vessel is decreased or it 
or it is blocked and no blood is coming now if the collaterals if the collateral vessels or the communicating vessels from the normal blood ves uh, normal blood vessels are able to give or provide some blood to this area and if they are able to provide even 1.3 ml per 100 gram per minute even this amount of blood even this small amount of blood can keep this area alive but if this is not present then uh, then infarction will occur mycordial infarction will occur or cells will die now what happens when the blood flow to the area has been stopped what happens is that the blood was the blood that is already present here the blood that is already present here it is consumed by the muscles it is consumed by the muscle cells and the oxygenated blood is converted into deoxygenated blood and it cannot be removed because the blood veins the blood vessels which are present here they get dilated they get dilated and this area becomes bluish it becomes bluish and the muscles here become edematous because the blood vessels that are already present due to decrease in blood due to decrease in blood supply from the main vessels they dilate those uh, the remaining vessels dilate so those vessels they seems engorged although blood is not coming but due to dilation the dilation has been caused by decreased blood flow so due to di dilation of the existing blood vessels in the surrounding the, the, those vessels become engorged and edema develops in that region this this region becomes edematous and it becomes a bluish in color now if proper amount of blood is not restored in a uh, proper amount of time which is pro, uh, which is needed then what will happen that the cells the cells will start dying the cells will start dying cells in this area will start dying and this process this pro process is known as infarction it infarction because infarction is the uh, the death of the muscle cell uh, cells infarction is the basically death of the cells and when this death of cells occur in the myocardium or the heart muscles it is known as myocardial infarction now there is another important thing there is another important thing which is basically the sub sub endocardial myofaction sub endocardial infarction Now we discussed previously that the heart, uh, the blood vessels in the heart are such that the blood vessels in the heart are such that some of the blood uh, vessels are present on the outer region of the heart, some are present between the muscles, and these muscles known as the these vessels are basically intramuscular branches. These are epicardial coronary vessels. These are the intramuscular branches, and finally just below the endocardium just below the endocardium for example here we have the endocardium suppose for example here we have the endocardium in the heart we have an epicardium the myocardium and then the endocardium now the blood vessels the circulation of the heart is such that the coronary vessels are uh, present outside the heart known as epicardial blood vessels then they give branches which are known as which are known as intramuscular uh, branches and then finally there are blood vessels which are subendocardial coronary vessels now these vessels uh, these vessels basically supply blood to the endocardium this is the endocardium and these endocardial vessels these endocardial vessels they are very much prone to the infarction process they are very much prone to the infarction process because during systole during systole even the blood vessels if they are normal during systole they are compressed especially on the left side of the heart they are compressed in the systole when the heart is contracting these blood vessels are con 
compressed and blood flow to these sub endocardial coronary vessels decreases blood vessel a uh, blood flow decreases to the sub endocardial coronary vessels and these vessels basically supply blood to the endocardium here we have the epicardium uh, we have the pericardium here we have the myocardium and then uh, here we have the endocardium so blood flow normally decreases to the endocardium even in normal blood vessels in normal systole and diastole so if the blood uh, if the in a, if the blood flow in your vessel has decreased due to formation of a thrombus then the endo, endocardium the endocardium will develop infarction earlier the endocardium will develop infarction earlier than the outer muscles and this is known as the sub endocardial infarction this is known as the sub endocardial infarction because the sub endocardium is more prone to the infarction process because the blood vessels they are that are supplying blood to this region passes through muscles and muscles basically contract in systole and due to their com contraction these muscles get compressed so blood normally decreases and when there a thrombus has occurred when mi has occurred or myocardial infarction has occurred so this region is more prone to infarction process now myocardial infarction or heart attack is simply the death of the heart muscles and why it occurs because uh, of any acute ischemic event which basically suddenly decreases the blood flow to the heart muscles and uh, due to decrease in the or stoppage of blood to the heart muscles there is um the uh, the the color the a the color of the area uh, changes it becomes blue it this area becomes edematous the blood vessels here dilate and finally the muscle cells here starts dying and this due to death of the muscle cells here the the activity or the functioning of the heart may also decreases and the muscles especially in the endocardium they are very much more prone to the infarction process because the the blood vessel they are supplying to these uh, region they basically pass through muscles and they get compressed even normally so that process is basically known as the sub endocardial infarction and it occurs more quickly than the muscles that are present on the outer portion of the heart so that's uh, all about the myocardial infarction or heart attack